All right, so my buddy Big Doug just got a fancy protection dog in from Holland, and uh, we're gonna see how that dog would help him in uh, times without rule of law. <laughs> All right, now guys, this is my friend Sam. Sam is a police officer uh, in Lexington, and so he's pretty familiar. Are you familiar with gang violence, uh, Officer Sam? I've seen some. Hey, do criminals normally walk up yelling and moving around and acting crazy? No, they're trying to not draw attention to themselves so they get within the range of contact they want. So that'd probably be if I want to get money or something from him within a hand's reach. Okay, now, Doug does have a dog. You think that would change uh, the perception a little bit? Uh, definitely for me. I'm not trying to get bit. Right, okay, but you still need that uh, $5 or $20, yeah, uh, whatever. Some... $5. Okay, all right. Pretty all right, big. so let's see here. All right, so now here's the criminal. He's walking up to Big Doug. Big Doug has a fancy, like, expensive five protection five dog from... I, I really need those five bucks, though. No, I ain't got five bucks. Hey, let me get those five bucks. No, I ain't got five bucks. Let me get those five bucks. No, I ain't got five bucks. Let me get five bucks. I ain't got five bucks. All right, so there you go. Okay, now take off running because that's what criminals do, right, after yeah. they shoot somebody? All right, now, Doug. Uh, fella just walked up, asked for some money, Shot me in the chest. and you were trying to like play it down. You weren't yelling at him. You're trying not to be combative. You're trying to say, I ain't got five dollars, right? Yep. Okay. And he ends up shooting you. Yep. And your dog, when he shot you, laid down. Yep. Is that what you expected when you wrote that big check? That's not what I want. All right. So let's uh, let's let's flip it around and see if this dog acts different under different conditions. All right, so we went in the kennel and we got some equipment for Sam because we're going to do a little experiment here. Now, Sam, earlier uh, you went over and you accosted Doug. You asked him for some money. When he refused to give you the money, what did you do? Uh, I pulled out my gun and shot him. You pulled out your gun and shot him. And did the dog make any efforts to stop you or to apprehend you or did in any other way be aggressive? No, the dog was just as calm as ever. Hey, just be honest. Did the dog kind of look like a sissy? <laughs> you don't want to say now I think I in, down after I shot in, in your work as a patrolman have you run up on a lot of dogs that you would say uh would do a better job of guarding or protecting their owner than that one yeah i think so yeah i mean like uh, how many times have you like you know went to go in a yard and some dogs come up jump on the fence act like they want to bite you and look pretty serious right yeah and did that dog strike you in any way as being one of those dogs no just for the record do you have any experience uh doing any kind of agitation work no. No, not a bit, right? Okay. Oh, do you think the dog will bite you if you go up now? I don't think so. It didn't give me much of a reaction the first time. Okay, so the only difference, guys, is that Sam has training equipment on, and uh, he's going to take his left arm, and he's going to move that stick in a little bit of a menacing way. Now, Sam has no skill, no prior experience of making dogs bite him, okay? This is just a, just a regular guy helping us, but we're going to see if the dog changes as a result of being presented with a helper who's wearing equipment. All right, uh, let's see, Sam, go ahead and go over there and start to agitate that dog a little bit. Now stop right there for just a second. Now, did you see, either of you see that dog move forward in the, in the first session? No. No, not a bit, right? Okay, so Sam, what I want you to do here is kind of holler a little bit and uh, turn sideways, like run sideways back and forth and act like you're gonna hit that dog with that whip a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. We're just testing him. Go ahead. Come a little closer. Let me get five bucks. Let me get five bucks. Now look at this. Let me get five bucks. Completely different dog, guys, because that's what the dog is used to. Let me get five bucks. All right, now move over there in front of Doug a little bit. Straight in front of him. There you go. Okay. Now, there we go. Okay. That's that's perfect. Now Sam has no experience. Doug has very little experience. Okay, now kind of turn him around this way, Doug. Pull him. Yeah, I want to see his face. All right, now, guys, this is what we're looking for. Stand right there, Sam. Look at this dog. This dog has reached up there, and he's bit Sam. Now, Sam, if you knew earlier when you pulled that gun out and we're going to shoot Doug that this is what was going to happen, would that have changed your mind? Yeah. Okay. Now, if that dog grabbed you by the arm, you're a pretty athletic guy, pretty tough guy. Do you think that would uh, make you want to leave Doug alone? Yeah. Okay, let me come up here and look at his grip. He's got a perfect grip. He's really getting hold of that sleeve good. Pull him back this way a little bit, Doug, so I can see. Him. There you go. <laughs> he's like, no. All right, now that's pretty cool. I mean, he's got an awesome, strong grip. Everything looks great with that. Our only problem then, Doug, is how do we get this dog from thinking about this equipment 
to doing something that's useful in real life. All right, see if you can get him to let go. And see, that's pretty good. That's cool. That's great. And what's that? Uh, what's that fancy Kentucky version of a language you're speaking there, Doug? He's trained in Holland Dutch. Holland Dutch. <laughs> North Dutch. Kentucky Holland Dutch. I like I that. You... Sam, put that sleeve right up against your, your Carlson Gracie uh, banner, right? And then uh, this will kind of be interesting. Doug, just uh, tell him to go bite Sam and let him go. Very nice. Good. That's perfect. Very good. Now go ahead and grab his leash, Doug. Now, is you know, like when you see that dog doing that, are you satisfied with that? Does that look cool? That's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Now, what is the big question? Will he bite a real person without all that gear on? You know, you pay the big money. What do you expect? Be honest. You expect him to bite when he needs to. <laughs> so when an evildoer so comes good, to northern right? Kentucky, what should your dog do? Take care of them. Take care of the evildoer. All right, so we're going to take another look at this dog that would not protect Doug against a person with a pistol, but will most certainly chase and bite somebody wearing uh, protection dog training equipment. And so Sam wanted to see what it was like to catch a dog from a little bit of a distance. All right, Doug, go ahead and let him go. Now look at this. Boom. Very nice. Now, now fight with him a little bit, Sam. He's a tough dog. Like move him around a little bit there. Very nice. Now, do you find that at all surprising, Sam, that the dog wouldn't bite you when you threatened to shoot his owner, but as soon as you put that uh, sleeve on, he, like, ran out there and got you good and hard? Yeah. Now, in all your patrol work, have you ever seen a dog latch on to an officer that well? Uh, no. No, of course not. So there is the big disconnect. That's what we have to try to, try, try to get squared away. Okay, all right, get him, Doug, before he ends up letting go and biting Sam on the leg. <laughs> now, look, that dog let go nice. I mean, that's an awesome dog. He's great, Doug, and as long as you get protect, uh, attacked by someone wearing a sleeve, I think you're in good shape. Now, we're going to do the same scenario, but with George. Uh, you ready? Yeah. All right, so same thing. Just kind of be up there. Yeah, I bought four. And Sam comes over here, the dog immediately starts to alert on Sam. That Trump doesn't even like people walking up to George. As soon as, like, Sam looked at George and approached him in a linear fashion, then Trump starts barking at him. Now, Trump is not as fancy a dog as the other dog, okay? Uh, he's not as good at the bite work. He's not as athletic. But... Like, he's quicker to bark. He's quicker to alert. He's quicker to engage in a type of uh, threat display that's likely to create space between an evildoer and his handler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. Good. Okay, come over this way, Sam. Kind of spin him around. Turn around this way so I can see him. You go over there. Go No, turn around the other way. Good. Very nice. All right, now kind of shake him around there a little bit. Get him. Alright, so you can see Trump has a pretty good grip also. Very nice. Okay, Sam, between those two dogs, uh, Big Doug's dog's a way fancier dog. He's way more expensive. He's got uh, more training and whatever. But, uh, like, which of the two dogs do you feel like provided a better deterrent in terms of uh, you being able to accost or assault the, the handler? Definitely Trump, because... There was nothing keeping me away. I thought it was just another friendly lap dog, and then all of a sudden, as soon as I got within probably 10 feet of Georgie, Trump started to let me have it. Yeah, yeah. And so let's go ahead. I'm going to show him from a different angle. Just walk up there towards George just a little bit aggressively. <laughs> See, and just as soon, like, just as soon, just, just stay, hold that distance for a minute, right? Just as soon as you get even close to George. Like in, uh, you know, in a manner that could be deemed the least little bit offensive, like Trump starts to alert and it starts to try to create space between you and George.